Okay, C. Lindelof videos, AP Calculus, evaluate the definite integral by the limit definition. First thing we have to do is kind of figure out what we're being asked here, and we're asked here to determine the definite integral of 8x dx between 2 and 6. And what we have to kind of realize is that what we're being told is this. We're being told that we have y is equal to 8. I know it's 8 because there's no x here. It's not 8x dx. It's just 8. So we, we have this function y is equal to x. And we're looking at it on the interval sorry, 2 to 6. And if you just looked at this for a second, I think you can see the answer. So here's the function. If this was just a multiple choice question and I was asked to figure this out, I wouldn't do any of this calculus. Um, we're asked to go from 2 to 6. So 2 to 6. The function is y is 8. So here's y is 8 here. y equals 8. I'm like, okay, well, look at this. Can everybody see this rectangle here? The distance between 2 and 6 is 4, right? So this distance here is 4. So the we have a base of 4, and we have a height of 8, so it should equal 32. Now, if you're asked to, to prove this by your professor using the uh, limit definition, then it's a different story. But if I was just asked to find this, I would say this is 8 and this is y. This is simple geometry here. And as much as I frankly dislike geometry, this is a, a great case of when I would use it. Having said all that crap, Let's get down to this. So I'm going to start sorting this out and getting my pieces together. Remember, we need base times height here. So I'm going to get my change of x is equal to, right, we need the distance traveled. So from 6 minus 2, so 6 minus 2 over the number of subintervals that we're going to have. And we're going to have n subintervals. So that gives us that change of x is equal to 4n. We also need this c sub i value. And c sub i is the beginning value, in this case, 2 plus i times change in x, and i times change in x is 4i over n. In a second, you're going to see in this particular case, this is totally irrelevant. I'm just showing you kind of how you'd muscle through this. So now we're going to start to use this limit process, use this process to get through this. And we're going to say that we're going to take the sum of f of x sub i times change in x sub i as in as soon as i goes from one to n sometimes i get all carried away and i start putting upper and lower bounds that's not how this works this is how many uh, sub intervals we're going to have so i have to be a little bit careful here so i would fill all this crap in as i fill it in it would continue to look like this so i'd have f of so i'd have f of c sub i c sub i is two plus four i over n and maybe you can already see that this is a exercise of futility because what this thing does is it keeps telling us how we're going to calculate the height at any at any given place. That's what's going on here. But we know that we have a horizontal line. So we have this function. Our function is y is equal to 8. So this is us calculating height. Well, we don't need to calculate height. We know our height will always be consistent. So we have summation as i goes from 1 to n of 8 because the height is always 8. Don't get freaked out. 8 times 4 in, we can clean that up and get, I'm going to stop writing all this, this i equals 1 to n, of 32 over n, right? We know from the properties, uh, uh, sigma properties, that we're allowed to factor out this 1 over n, so I'm going to factor out my 1 over n, right, times the summation is i equals 1 to n of 32. Now we're going to use our summation formulas, and you have to have these memorized. They're going to really come in handy. So we're going to go to our summation formulas, and we know that the summation formula corresponding to a constant is the constant times n. So we're going to go to some. This is sigma notation. We're going to go to summation formulas as I did. It's going to be 1 over n times 32n, which simplifies to 32, doesn't it? We're going to have 32n over n is 32. We are done, but to clean this up, this is the way your professor is going to expect to see us to clean this up. You're going to need to say to him or her that you realize that what you've just done is you've taken the definite integral of 8 dx from 2 to 6 is equal to the limit as the number of subintervals goes to 0. This is the same number of subintervals going to zero. It's the same as the norm going to zero because the norm is the value is the width of the base. So if the width of the base goes to zero, you're going to get a bunch of those bases, right? And you're going to get the the limit of 32 as n goes to infinity. There is no value of n here to interfere with this in any way. So that limit will just be 
equal to 32. So I hope this is really helpful. I'm going to do a couple more, and there'll be different ones that have um, where you could, this stuff actually comes in handy. Just in this case, it didn't, so I thought I should show it to you anyway. Um, hope this is helpful. If you have any questions or comments, let me know, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks.